if you're thinking about things that way and can drive that mindset to your leadership, you're just adding more value to your position in the company. Everyone wants more budget. Everyone wants more headcount. Everyone wants more salary increases. Everyone wants more uh, dividends and rewards for investors. Um, and so you can either try to cut corners, which actually is going to come back to bite you, uh, or you can go about it in this type of way. We, we just can be operationally more sensible and uh, create a lot more happiness among our employees, our partners, and our customers in, in the course of it. Yeah, yeah. you're talking about uh, how do you incentivize people to make the shift? And um, I was talking about this concept of right the first time, you know, being ex uh, passed on to everybody uh, in the lens of the customer's expectation. So there's a phrase that I coined for that, and it's customer experience annuities. It's the idea of uh, like a, a fund, an annuity fund that mm -hmm. you can live off the, the interest and not touch the principal. And it just, you know, it's a gift that keeps on giving essentially. So my idea of the customer experience annuities is that um, you have currently a certain amount of committed investment to your customer service area, customer success, escalations, social media monitoring, uh, loyalty programs, churn reduction, the acquisition addiction to make up for churn, you know, put all that together. That's a fantastic amount of money. Mm -hmm. You're committed to spend that this quarter, next quarter, next year, the next year, because how do you get out of it? You can't just say, well, you know, customer wants to escalate it. We're not doing escalations anymore. Bye-bye. I mean, you can, but you're going to lose something, right? You're going to lose something if you don't do these things. And that's why companies are doing them. But here's the deal. Uh, that is not only linear as you continue to increase the number of customers that you're serving over time, it becomes exponential in some cases where customers were just putting up with something, but then they become vocal mm -hmm. either to you or to others. And therefore, you know, you're having fallout of different site, different types. So it's not necessarily just a linear thing. It's craziness. What we need to do is be thinking about the annuities of let's, uh, let's stop those things that customers don't like. And when we do stop uh, causing those things, you have to get to the real root cause, right. you stop the cause of it. Now, suddenly all those different resources, all that, that funding that had been going to those things isn't needed because customers aren't worried, aren't bothered by those things anymore. Okay. So now those things are freed up. So you have to uh, have a prevention mindset. There's two levels, there's three levels of customer experience improvement. First is uh, resolving the instance. And that's what everybody's working on is how do we solve things when a customer brings to our attention that they weren't happy about something, they're confused about something, they're about to stop buying from us, whatever. That's prevention, that's resolving the instance. The second thing is uh, preventing recurrence of a prevalent issue. So if you get your dispositioning reports, or you just know that certain things are, you know, pretty, pretty big uh, issue for customers, then you need to rally the forces of cross-functional group that, that uh, has a hand in that. Don't just look for the quick wins. You've got to do the correlation analysis to identify where are my biggest gains going to be in terms of what's connected to loyalty. Do the Pareto analysis of the, those uh, key drivers of the, the strong correlated items. Uh, the Pareto would say, well, of all the different customer comments or the operational issues associated with that key driver, uh, here's, here's how they kind of lay out in a, a, a prioritized way. And these top two or three or four things are the 80% of the cause. So the 80-20 rule is the Pareto mm -hmm. rule. And when you have, when you can address the, the 80%, then you know essentially that issue is almost negated. This is where we're missing out. We're not thinking logically about this, but when you identify those 
vital few instead of the useful many. The quick wins are usually in the useful many. Just get out of that. Quick wins are not bad, but you can't just put all of your eggs in that basket because it's right. not doing enough. You can because think you, that you like get you said, awards you have, and things. You have to understand the thematic problems that you're seeing in certain places. Yeah. And like you said, work to prevent them, not just you know work in a, in a proactive um, methodology to, to prevent them, not reactive to try to fix them after they've happened. Yeah, it's possible to get awards and uh, pats on the back for uh, doing these quick wins, but yet you don't get the ROI that you're looking for because customers are still bothered by the vital few issues associated with that key driver. So with the vital few, you need to remember that those are symptoms of what, what's really wrong. So with a symptom, you can either just put a bandage on it and think that it's going to go away, but it's not, right? You need to, to say, why is, are we allowing this to happen? Why are we allowing that? Why are we allowing that? When you get to the fifth why, that's the real root. Now, usually with that real root is not owned by one business unit. People kind of think, well, let's just keep it simple. We don't want to have to like coordinate with that other group. It's just impossible. You have to coordinate with other groups if you're going to prevent recurrence of the root issue. It might take 18 months. It might take six months for some of these things. But that's how you create a customer experience annuity. Because when you're done with that thing and the vital few are not happening anymore, now it's freeing up all of that fund funding that had to be going to those things. For example, you might have a lot of engineers who are troubleshooting. Guess mm -hmm. what? They don't have to be troubleshooting anymore. Now the engineers can create new value. They can exactly. design something. And think about how, how that goes the other way. Uh, it's like squared or cubed or oh, okay. quadrupled. From an exponential standpoint, <laughs> got, got, exponential, got, yeah. that's the word, right? <laughs> the value can be exponential from these CX annuities because you can take those resources and put them to something that might have a huge trajectory or, you know, just multiple ways that it's benefiting you in not dragging you down any further, um, not having to make up for those, those lost customers, but Growing well, and like you business. said, from, from the perspective of, of the engineer, it's like if you're creating new new value, new service value to your customers, now that time that's being spent is actually generating new revenues. The, the time and what the engineers are putting their time into is actually generating new revenue, expanding your revenue across existing mm -hmm. customers that you're not having to spend upfront ad dollars yeah. to try to go out and, and access. And I think that's one of the things too I, I look at when they talk about you know return on ad spend. Well, wh where, what numbers and what information are you pulling to get that? Because if if you're pulling in a great amount up front, but then as you said, you got customer churn. What what are the, what is the value that could have been? What is the you know mm -hmm. that opportunity cost that you're missing because you haven't done those things? And that really should play back into because if you spent money on an ad to get a customer. You don't want to have to, to go again because, you know, we talked just a minute ago, you said about, you know, acquiring customers from your competition. Well, if what's what's worse, is, you know, you've, you've spent money up front to to from an acquisition standpoint to get them on board. Then you don't do the things right to to keep them there. They go to your competitor and now you've got to go back again and spend more money to try to acquire them and, and you know, basically steal them back from your competitor. Now you've doubled up your actual cost of acquisition for that one customer. Exactly. So you talked about opportunity cost and that that's the third level. So there's uh, pre pre resolving the instance, there's preventing recurrence for everyone. And then there's preventing occurrence for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're using those expectations personas to guide every group in our company, even the partners and affiliates and such uh, our ecosystem to be congruent with that. And therefore we're preventing occurrence of issues in the first place. And guess what? It's a lot more fun to do work. <laughs> people aren't going, people are gonna want to, to stay with your brand uh, of all types, employees, customers, partners, suppliers. It just makes things so much more magnetic.